Hello and welcome to Basics for Gamers presents The Basics of Alignment. In this presentation you'll learn about the alignment system used in D&D and other role-playing games. We'll introduce the alignment system, review all nine alignment categories, and discuss when it makes sense for a player to act outside of their character's alignment. But to start we should take it back to the basics and go over exactly what alignment is. Alignment is a snapshot of a character's sense of morality and principles. Is your character an altruistic hero willing to sacrifice their own life to save others? Or are they more selfish and only looking out for themselves? Does your character hold to society's laws, or would they rather just watch the world burn? Although the alignment system has been a staple of role-playing games since the 1970s, it's one of the most misunderstood elements of D&D and its children RPGs such as Pathfinder and Starfinder. Let me just get this out of the way right at the start. Your alignment is written in pencil on a paper character sheet it is not etched in stone. A character's alignment helps in making decisions that would be suitable for their personality, but should never be treated like a straitjacket to control or limit a character. Few people in reality are so rigid-minded and two-dimensional that they can be boxed into any one single alignment at all times, and characters should be free to step outside of their alignment box on occasion. We'll see some examples of that later on. The classic representation of alignment is a 3x3 three three grid with 9 boxes total. One axis represents a character's ethics and morality, and that's called the good to evil spectrum, while the other axis represents the character's sense of order or rebellion, and that is noted along lawful to chaotic. By lining up each axis, we can label the 9 alignments neutral good, lawful neutral, or chaotic evil for example, and the middle of both axes is labeled true neutral. Let's tackle the good versus evil spectrum first. This represents a character's willingness to help others. Good characters have a respect for life and freedom, while evil characters are willing to torture, kill, or enslave to further their own goals. When working with new players, I often paint the picture like this. You're walking down the road and you encounter a stranger. You don't know them and they are in dire need of help. You're able to provide this help, but must sacrifice something fairly valuable to do so. And I don't describe the scenario beyond that. I don't get into specifics. I don't even get into what kind of trouble they're in or what you'll have to sacrifice to help them. You don't want to get bogged down in details, as this is just meant to be a quick gut check. After I present that very, very brief scenario, I give them three options. Option A, do you sacrifice from yourself and help the stranger? Option B, do you strike a deal with the stranger? You're, you're willing to help them, but only if you get something in return. Or option C, do you take advantage of this helpless stranger? Do you sacrifice from them to better yourself? In this case, maybe you rob them while they're vulnerable. If you chose option A, you're likely good aligned. If you chose option C, you're evil. And if you chose B, then you could be in that gray neutral zone of the spectrum. When it comes to good versus evil, selfish actions often fall within the neutral alignments. And in fact, with two exceptions, Whenever you see the word neutral, you should probably be thinking selfish, and a lack of any real commitment to good or evil could also constitute a neutral alignment. The other axis notes a character's preference for law versus chaos. Many players, both new and experienced, mistake law for meaning good and chaos for meaning bad. Neither of these terms are inherently good or bad. Law versus chaos represents a character's preference for structure and order in their lives. Are you more likely to obey or to rebel? Where does your character get their sense of right and wrong? Is it from an external source such as a city's laws or the tenets of your religion? Or does your sense of right and wrong come from an internal source? Maybe you do what you feel is just because that's how you feel. And to hell with all the laws and the rules, you're going to follow what your heart tells you is right and just. 
If your sense of right and wrong comes from clearly defined rules, such as a government's regulations, a personal code of honor, or a church's laws, then you're probably lawful. If your sense of right and wrong comes from within, regardless of any rules or laws, then you're probably chaotic. Also, chaotic characters often favor living out in the wild amongst nature, while lawful characters may prefer living behind the walls in the structure of a city. Let's look at the nine alignments in turn, and starting with lawful good. Lawful good characters value structure, order, and laws. They might have even sworn an oath to a church or a cause that they believe in. They also are forces for good. They are willing to help those in need and protect the weak. And although they tend to obey authority, they always place goodness first and would not blindly follow rules or a superior's orders if doing so would unjustly inflict harm on others. Lawful good characters are honest and trustworthy. Their ward is their bond and they would avoid telling a lie even to an evil opponent. Some examples in popular culture of lawful good characters might be the fabled knights in shining armor or noble samurai. In fiction, you can find other examples such as Superman, Ned Stark, or Optimus Prime. A neutral good character is dedicated to doing what's right and helping others. They generally obey the law and they work well with authority figures, but the neutral good character does not feel beholden to those laws. They always try to work within the law if possible, but they are willing to bend those rules if that's what's needed to serve the greater good. Neutral good characters believe a society needs laws to function, but if the laws are too many or too rigid, then they pose too great a limitation on personal freedoms. They believe in doing the right thing, but don't bother with enforcing any kind of ideology the way a lawful good character probably would. A neutral good character would keep their word to good and neutral on characters, but have no problem lying to someone who is clearly evil. Some people view neutral good as a sort of transitional phase that's typical of young heroes who are still trying to find their place and haven't fully fallen into either the lawful good or chaotic good categories yet. Some examples might include cops who don't go by the book, like Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop, or Captain James T. Kirk who generally obeys authority, but he's not afraid to bend or regulation here or there if that's the right thing to do or to be in a no-win scenario. And perhaps the most popular example of a neutral good character is Spider-Man, who believes with great power comes great responsibility, and he is definitely a force for good, but he works outside of the law, although he greatly respects that law. Chaotic good characters follow their conscience. They believe in upholding good and doing what's right, but they really don't care about any rules or laws. They follow their own path, not the one that's laid out for them by governments or religions or other organizations. Chaotic good characters have strong beliefs in freedom and individuality. They oppose anyone who would seek to take away another person's freedom. At times, a chaotic good character may be selfish and a little greedy, but they would not seek to harm anyone who didn't have it coming. Chaotic good characters often work alone as they do value their freedom, but they're willing to help those in need and do so on their own terms. Chaotic good characters have a strong dislike for authority and may freely break laws, but always do so in the pursuit of what is good and just. They would not harm an innocent person, and if they ever kill you, you'll be awake, you'll be facing them, and you'll be armed. They won't kill for pleasure, and they won't torture, but are more than willing to intimidate to get what they need. Chaotic good characters only lie to evildoers, and would never, ever betray an ally or a friend. Examples of chaotic good characters include Captain Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly, Robin Hood, and Wolverine. 
The lawful neutral alignment is often referred to as the judge. These characters view right and wrong as being clearly defined with little or no shades of gray between them. They hold order above concerns of doing good or evil. The law is the law. They believe structure and civilization to be of paramount importance and will usually put the needs of a community over the needs or the freedoms of an individual. Lawful neutral characters believe the world is black and white, right and wrong. They enforce the rules without regard for good or evil. If someone steals a loaf of bread to feed their starving family, then that's a crime and they should be punished accordingly. They also hold personal honor very high. They are trustworthy figures who would never tell a lie. Examples of lawful neutral characters might include Judge Dredd, most depictions of Death or the Grim Reaper, and perhaps the best example of lawful neutral in my opinion is Sergeant Joe Friday from Dragnet. Truly neutral characters are the most difficult to define and pin down. They prefer good to evil, but they're really not interested in going out of their way to enforce either. They can come off as distant, uncommitted, or aloof. They're often perceived as being a slacker or just not caring. Neutral characters can be selfish and almost always place their own interests ahead of a group's, but not to the point of inflicting harm to the group. Most non-sentient creatures are truly neutral. They act purely on instinct or programming without any awareness of good versus evil or law versus chaos. Although true neutral characters can hold very fluid outlooks on the world and frequently change their mind, this alignment should not be considered as some kind of wild card or loophole that will allow a player to do whatever they want, whenever they want, without concern for the alignment system. True neutrality is not a way to get around the rules. Examples of truly neutral characters include the dude from The Big Lebowski, computers and artificial intelligence that simply perform the functions that they are programmed to do without any awareness of good or evil. For example, maybe a starship's computer from Star Trek. And all non-sentient animals, except for the family dog because they're good boys and girls. Chaotic good, but still good. Chaotic neutral characters are often viewed as being extremely selfish, but not to the point of committing acts of evil. Frequent examples of chaotic neutral characters would be criminals who don't really want to harm others by their crimes, or a common example are the more heroic pirates, those who might raid and steal, but they're more likely to taunt and humiliate their victims than kill them. Chaotic neutral characters are free spirits who are concerned with themselves first and foremost. As with chaotic good characters, those who are chaotic neutral also fiercely value freedom and independence. But whereas chaotic good characters will fight against the oppression of others, Chaotic neutral characters look out for number one, and they tend to only care about their own freedom. A chaotic neutral character may work with organizations, but only as long as doing so benefits them and will quickly sever those ties without a hint of regret. Although they do not embrace traditions or care one whit about governments, chaotic neutral characters are not anarchists who would lead a revolt or conspire to burn down an institution. They simply don't care about such things as long as they're left alone. Chaotic neutral characters do not place limitations on themselves, like being entirely honest or always keeping their promises, but of course would if doing so furthered their own interests. And although they don't see any value in the laws of a society, they would not break a law just simply for the sake of doing so and would not commit evil acts such as torture or slavery. Chaotic neutral characters are rarely the protagonists of the story, but there are a few good examples, like Captain Jack Sparrow, Catwoman, or Danny Ocean from the Ocean's Eleven series of films. Before we move into discussing the evil alignments, 
it's worth mentioning that the six that we've already discussed are considered the standard for player characters in most role-playing games, and the remaining three were developed with the adversaries in mind. That's not to say that evil characters can't be remarkable, interesting, and fulfilling player characters, but it's advised that DMs, especially new ones, proceed with caution before allowing a player to have an evil alignment. We'll start our discussion of the evil alignments with one of the more misunderstood of the nine alignments, and that's lawful evil. I frequently hear new players ask, how can someone be both lawful and evil? Doesn't being evil go against following laws? Well, maybe. Let's go back to our discussion of what lawful means. Characters who are lawful value order and structure, and their sense of justice often comes externally, from the tenets of a cult or oppressive government, for example. And as we discussed before, evil characters seek personal benefit at the expense of others. Whereas a lawful good character believes the laws of their city, the will of their king, or the rules of their church exist to benefit others, lawful evil characters will wield those laws and tenets as a weapon to control and oppress others. Individuals who wish to dominate and impose their will on others are lawful evil. In societies which cater to authoritarian rule, with harsh punishments for, for seemingly minor crimes, or those societies which promote slavery as being acceptable, would also be labeled as lawful evil. A lawful evil character values order, tradition, loyalty, and obedience, but shuns notions of freedom and independence. Lawful evil characters value hierarchies and seek to place vulnerable communities such as ethnic, racial, or social minorities at the bottom of those hierarchies so that they may rise in power. They are the masters, and the less fortunate should be their servants. Laws are valuable because they are a means to seize hold of and maintain power over others. Slavery, public executions, and oppressive caste systems are all laws that they would dutifully uphold and view notions of equality and personal freedom as signs of weakness. Lawful evil characters value allies and loyalty, and will impose swift and fatal punishment on those who might betray them. Lawful evil characters often have codes that they perceive as moral, and that separate them from common thugs, but usually allow themselves a few loopholes. For example, their personal code might be to never kill an unarmed foe, but they'd order one of their minions to do it for them. Or they might never tell a lie, but would mislead or intentionally withhold valuable information. They have no problems using torture to get what they need, but they likely find the practice a little distasteful and would not torture just for pleasure. A few examples of lawful evil characters might be certain depictions of the devil, especially those where mortals sell their souls by signing a contract. Leaders of cults and corrupt churches or governmental dictators would also be lawful evil. Specific examples might include Emperor Palpatine, General Kuvira from The Legend of Korra, or the Kingpin from Marvel Comics. If chaotic neutral pirates are the heroic sorts who like to playfully tease and humiliate their opponents, the neutral evil pirates are the black bars of the world, who would hang severed heads from the bows of their ships, or torture defeated captains in front of their crews, or man their ships with enslaved townspeople. Neutral evil characters tend to be selfish criminals who have no qualms about harming or killing innocent people to get what they want. They do whatever they can get away with and indulge in a variety of hedonistic acts for their own pleasure without concern for how those activities might harm others. They lie, they torture and kill, not simply for the sake of it, but because they benefit from doing so. Neutral evil is the most selfish of the nine alignments. Neutral evil characters will work with others so long as doing so furthers their goals, but will also stab those allies in the back for the same reasons. 
more than truly partnering with others, neutral evil characters would use others as tools to reach a desired outcome. Neutral evil characters never feel a responsibility to keep their word, they will kill innocents and unarmed foes, and in general they do whatever they need to do to benefit themselves. Some examples of possible neutral evil characters are Lex Luthor, Hans Gruber from Die Hard, and Eric Cartman. Some people just want to watch the world burn. In role-playing games, we call them chaotic evil. Chaotic evil characters embrace destruction for the sake of destruction and evil for the sake of evil. They may not even benefit from the pain and suffering they cause, but instead derive pleasure from the sheer chaos that they have created. They avoid being in groups as any form of organization goes against the chaos that they desire. They are demonic, forces of pure evil and the bane of everything the good and righteous represent. They value personal strength and view laws in order as tools for only the weak. Serial killers and the most cruel and depraved of criminals fall into this category. The most frequently cited example of a chaotic evil character is the Joker, but a few others might be Bellatrix Lestrange, Kid Boo from Dragon Ball, and the evil Midnight Bomber What Bombs at Midnight from The Tick. While reviewing the Nine Alignments, I wouldn't be surprised if some of my examples raise an eyebrow. It seems like arguing over what alignment category certain movie and comic book characters fall into has become an obsession over the internet, and I'll be the first to admit that it's a subjective process and the examples that I use may not be the same that others would. And a large reason for that is that no interesting and compelling character from fiction spends their entire career trapped inside of one alignment box. Never, ever. Just like real people, they face situations and make decisions that cause them to behave like another alignment at times, but generally speaking, they only do so occasionally and rarely move more than one step away from their default alignment. I've even seen it argued that over the five seasons of Breaking Bad, at one point or another, the protagonist, Walter White, assumes every single one of the nine alignments, which is appropriate given that he's a fascinating character and the overarching plot of Breaking Bad is exploring what it would take for a good and noble person to become a ruthless villain. So interesting characters should not be caged into any single alignment, but they should be able to shift when it's appropriate. Let's use Captain Picard as an example, not only because he's a well-known figure, but he's also one of the most frequently debated characters when it comes to alignment. Some people argue that he is lawful good. After all, he values law, order, and structure, and he will gladly sacrifice from himself to benefit others. But other people point out that in one episode, Homeward, Captain Picard is willing to let the entire population of a planet die because he's bound by the Prime Directive. In favoring the letter of the law over the well-being of millions of innocent people, that makes him lawful neutral, right? And there are other times when Captain Picard acts more in line with a neutral good philosophy, directly opposite of lawful neutral, in that he's blatantly ignoring rules and regulations because obeying them would cause the death of an innocent person. This was the case in the episode Pen Pals, when Picard allows Commander Data to visit an alien child and save her planet from cataclysmic disaster, even though doing so is a clear violation of Starfleet's prime directive, the exact same law that he previously was willing to let an entire planet's population die to preserve. So what alignment is Captain Picard? Is he lawful good? Is he neutral good? Is he lawful neutral? Is he something else? I would place his default alignment as lawful good and note that he occasionally shifts one step on the chart into neutral good and lawful neutral. Occasional shifts moving one step on the chart 
aren't just accepted where they should be encouraged. This is what makes a character believable and enhances the story that you and your fellow players are creating. But moving more than one step on the chart should only happen very briefly and in very rare circumstances. I can't envision Captain Picard ever becoming so selfish that he would be chaotic neutral. And it would take truly extreme circumstances for him to move all the way to lawful evil. Say, being assimilated into the Borg Collective? Occasional shifts of one step are common, but characters can and should grow over time, which could lead their default alignment to change as well. There are few hard and fast rules in 5th edition for changing a character's alignment. Some magic items, such as the Deck of Many Things, can change your alignment, or prolonged exposure to the plane of Bitopia can move your alignment towards lawful or neutral good. There's even a magic gateway in one of D&D's most infamous adventure modules that flips the alignment of anybody who walks through it. But really, in 5th edition, if you want to change your alignment, just have a conversation with your DM. Provide a logical reason, and as long as the change doesn't cause problems for the game, she'll probably allow it. I would, however, greatly caution DMs when wanting to force an alignment change on a player. I've been in a few games where the DM decided that it would be fun to curse a player and radically change their alignment. One second, they're neutral good, and the next, they're chaotic evil. For some players, this could be a fun change of pace, especially if it's temporary. But in my experience, DMs forcing an unwanted alignment change on a player has never turned out to be fun for anyone, even for that DM. Players value agency. They want to control their characters and make decisions for their characters. And when a change like this is forced on a player and requires them to play their character in opposition, to the way that they want to, it sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's a bad time for everyone involved. So don't do it without first having a clear and open conversation with that player to make sure they're not simply okay with an alignment change, but they actually want one. With that, we'll bring this video to a close. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, and don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss out on our future videos. Leave us a comment letting us know what topics you'd like to see covered in our future videos, and we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. If you'd like to use some of the maps that we feature in our videos in your own games, you can find them at Maps of Mastery. A link to that store can be found in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon with more basics for your favorite tabletop games.